a greeting of peace to my sisters and my brothers, and a very warm welcome to the Mayor of Croydon. Mr. Mayor, you're very warmly welcome. Madam Mayoress, it's wonderful to have you here. What I'd like us to do is just have a minute of reflection time, because you've come through heavy traffic, I can imagine, and you've had a long and busy day, I'm sure. So let's just take a moment to be present and go on another type of journey, an inner journey this time. Let the body relax so that the body experiences peace and comfort. And now I go inside and find that space which is sacred, my own inner space of peace. And I ask, what do I need for happiness? Do I have everything I need? Or is there something more? And tonight, we're very fortunate. We have Sister Shivani. I know many of you have been watching her on television for many years. Some of you might be meeting her tonight for the first time. But she's been doing service here in the UK, across the UK, and around 13 cities in Europe in a very fast whirlwind tour but we are lucky that she is able to be here in Croydon with all of us tonight. And so I'm going to firstly ask Mr. Mayor to come and say a few words, and after that, Sister Shivani will give us the pleasure of sharing her insights and wisdom. Thank you for being with us, but thank you all for being with us also. Om Shanti. Thank you, Sister Jayanti. I'm really excited to be here amongst you because this is a, a very great gathering of our communities in Croydon. So I'd like to welcome Sister Jayanti and her team, and especially Sister uh, Shivani uh, in UK, and especially in Croydon as, as mayor of Croydon. So welcome, and I'd like to start my speech with saying, uh, peace be upon you, Om Shanti, and Wassalam. So it means greetings, message for the peace, and the greetings from the mayor. Thank you. Sister uh, Shibani, I have seen you in TV in, 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 in some session, and I think you are bringing a great message, a, a great message for people to relax, people to unwind from their to day to day, day to day um, uh, confrontation, hard work, uh, and family issues. Uh, you are helping hundreds of families to be the family, to be with each other after relaxing, after the yoga that you provide, the Raj Yoga. I think it's a self-realization. Uh, people find themselves where in peace and in in relaxation, you know, people find times to ask themselves a few questions. You know, what are we so busy with our life, doing so many different things, when we can stick to few things and do them well? You are helping them to focus, to pay some attention uh, to, their, to themselves first, and next to their families. I am aware of, uh, in Croydon, there are a number of yoga classes goes on. And you'll be pleased to know, Croydon Council support them. Croydon Council find them sometime occasionally premises with reduced rate. Uh, and also uh, office at, support them with other facilities uh, for the wider communities with wider activities. But yoga is one of them that we understand. Number of school in uh, Croydon 
um, there are yoga teachers connect with the school with their PHSE, and occasionally they do yoga session uh, in their uh, assembly. So yoga is becoming known and more known to the community, and uh, you are a driver of that because a lot of our families watch you in TVs and, and, and they follow you. So uh, I'm very pleased to be here, and I, I hope I'm going to learn a little bit more uh, or more uh, from various speakers about yoga and activities. And uh, thank you very much for coming to Croydon. first steps on my own journey of transformation. The story of the Brahma Kumaris. It was just such a calling which stirred in the heart of the founder of the Brahma Kumaris, Dada Lekraj, who soon became known as Brahma Baba. The impulse for change came as a result of a series of visions he received in which he saw how the world itself was to undergo a process of profound transformation. The changes that came about in Brahmabhava as a result soon brought about changes in others too, who likewise were feeling the urge for something new. The small group that formed around him, mostly women, became known as the Daughters of Brahma, the Brahma Kumaris. When the call came for... out in Brahmabhava as a result, soon brought about changes in others too, who likewise were feeling the urge for something new. The small group that formed around him, mostly women, became known as the Daughters of Brahma, the Brahma Kumaris. When the call came for someone to come to the West and share the vision of the Brahma Kumaris, it was Daddy Janki who stepped forward. With nothing more than a change of clothes, she left India for the first time and boarded an aeroplane to London. She had practically no formal education behind her and didn't even speak any English. What she did have, however, was an unshakable faith and an unbreakable love for God. Sankara 
विश्वास तब होगा जब हिम्मत होगी सच्चा बन करके परमात्मा के प्यार से उसका जो फल मिलता है को देंगे Daddy Janki stayed in London for the next 40 years, sharing the fruits of her faith, courage and honesty with many others, inspiring them to connect with their own inner powers for self-transformation. Now, after more than 80 years of spiritual service and well into her hundreds herself, Daddy Janki is still the same powerhouse she ever was. the exchange that you're having with others is creating something. Sister Genti has witnessed firsthand how, with Daddy's presence in London, the Brahma Kumaris has grown from an apartment in a small terraced house to a purpose-built facility, serving the whole of the UK, Europe and beyond. When I started on this journey, I wanted to see, was it possible for me to change characteristics that were negative and be able to transform myself into the original state of being that I knew was possible. And to my wonder and surprise, I discovered that that's what all this is about, that you can create the highest within yourself and allow that potential to emerge in a very practical way. And if one person can do it, well, so can many, many others also. Kumaris was established in 1937 in pre-partitioned India. It now has a presence in 110 countries through a network of over 4,500 centers and more than a million regular students worldwide. Soon after the establishment of the Brahma Kumaris in London and in 40 cities throughout the UK, meditation and retreat places were established throughout Europe. Today, more than 80 years later, it has grown into a worldwide spiritual organization and the largest of its kind to be led by women. Like the transforming cells of the chrysalis, which group together to form supportive clusters of new butterfly cells. The Brahma Kumaris has a global network of centers where spiritual support encourages innate potential to flourish. The spiritual organization invites people from all walks of life to come and learn the art of Raj Yoga meditation free of cost. Everyone, regardless of religion, race, social or economic status, is welcome to study the spiritual knowledge and meditation. Meditation helps the soul to see with positive energy and sharing this positivity with others. Putting those positive qualities into practical actions and with self-transformation, hope is created that eventually the world will become a positive place to live. purpose to the Brahma Kumaris being at the United Nations and the purpose is to reaffirm faith in the dignity and worth of the human being. So the way we do this is that we bring to the table, we integrate into the programs of the United Nations a spiritual trajectory of awareness, attitude, vision, action as a subtle dynamic to transformation. Over the years, the activities of the Brahma Kumaris have diversified with a number of international events, including projects like Million Minutes of Peace, Global Cooperation for a Better World, Peace in the Park festivals, and programs for young people and emerging leaders. Choose, Change and Become, 
Spotlight Values and Om Cafe. The Brahmakumaris also work in partnership with several other international projects, including Living Values Education, Images and Voices of Hope, and Spirit of Humanity Forum, as well as participating in the international events on climate change. Wherever the Brahma Kumari centers exist, they play a significant role in the community. Whether it's supporting people in the aftermath of a disaster, encouraging women to make positive changes to their lives, helping teenagers cope with the huge pressure of modern life, or just supporting individuals generally who wanting to grow and change within themselves. We are there to help. Whenever we can, we are there to serve. Our lives and the changes we make to them are part of that process of change. Each small step affecting the whole. As the butterfly flaps its wings, the effects can be felt on the other side of the world. What we are witnessing in the world, as with the butterfly, is the splitting open of the old skin and the emergence of a new and transformed story for humanity. Like the emerging butterfly, there comes a time when we too are ready to unfold the wings of our own conscious awakening. Profoundly changed from the place where we began, we step into our full magnificence and splendor. And it's then that on our journey of transformation, we begin to truly fly. I'm sure just seeing the movie does it create any thought inside you? Yes? What's the thought it creates inside you? Hanji? Hope. Hope. Okay. Anything else? What does the movie create inside you? It creates peace inside you. Beautiful. Anybody else? What does the movie create inside you? A thought? Anything? Inspiration. Hanji. Nothing is impossible. Beautiful. Anybody else? Be? Be close to God. Anything else? Who's ready to become the butterfly? Who's ready to become the butterfly? <laughs> Ten minutes of the journey of the caterpillar to butterfly and you still don't want to become the butterfly. Not all of us. We never talk for everybody over here. Let's take personal responsibility. And it's not necessary. Everyone wants to become the butterfly. So I have to ask myself, do I want to become the butterfly? <coughs> either we feel it's too difficult, either we feel I'm already a butterfly so I don't need to become a butterfly, or I feel don't know what it needs to become a butterfly, how can I just raise my hand without knowing what does it need to become a butterfly? But otherwise, who would not want to become that beautiful butterfly? Who would not? So ready? Ready? 
and how much time would it take to shift from a life of a caterpillar to a butterfly? Ten minutes. <laughs> life of a caterpillar to a butterfly, how much time would it take? Twenty-one days. Says who? Says who? Says? Says science, okay. Anybody else? How much time to shift from my one habit which makes me a butterfly, sorry, which makes me a caterpillar and just change that habit, become a butterfly? Lifetime. See the spectrum of answers we get. Ten minutes, twenty-one days, lifetime, any other option? How much time from a caterpillar to a butterfly? One minute. Oh. One second. Oh. Straight away. Very good. Sanjay Bhai, less than ten minutes, straight away. Absolutely. Absolutely. Just one decision that this habit, this way of thinking, this way of being, this way of living makes my life like a caterpillar. And what's the life of a caterpillar? We just saw the visual there. It has the potential to be a butterfly but it's living like a caterpillar. Not aware that it has the potential to be a butterfly and believing that my life is Believing, the caterpillar believes, the caterpillar believes that my life is, how do I look? How do I look? How do I feel? And I believe that this is how I will be. Not aware that one moment, it's going to be the transformation is one moment and in that one moment the caterpillar life is over and I've become a butterfly. And what does the butterfly give to people around them? Remember childhood when we used to run after the butterfly? Huh? Titli, titli, titli. Huh? So what is the butterfly? It's not just beauty for itself, but a butterfly also radiated that beauty to everybody else. Nobody ran after a caterpillar like that. Kitna sundar hai caterpillar. Butterfly. Butterfly. So the movie is about the power of transformation. Sometimes when we talk about change, we think it's very difficult. Some of us believe that we cannot change. Some of us have reasons to say, no, this is my habit and I cannot change. Someone says it's my zodiac sign, someone says my it's parental habit, someone says it's just me, I don't have, the, I have tried and it's not working out, I cannot change. So we accept the life of a caterpillar. <coughs> And yet, this movie says, it just takes one thought. And the whole journey of ten minutes of this movie is not the transformation of one soul. But what this movie gives to me is the power of one soul becoming from a caterpillar to butterfly becomes instrumental for millions of souls to become from caterpillar to butterfly. Look at the power. Power that if I change, that change is not only about me, that change is going to radiate to millions. So, don't you think it's worth it to become a butterfly? Don't know how many more people will become butterflies because of our transformation. And that's what the movie aims. To share with us the power which each soul has, but sometimes unaware, not using our power not using our power. And so the movie showed us the journey of Brahma Baba, which was in 1937 in Hyderabad, Sindh, just had visions of the world going through a transformation. What he saw in 1937, we're seeing it in reality today. Even when 20, 22 years back, I came to the Brahma Kumaris and I was told, Brahma Baba saw this. And I said, I don't see any of that happening yet. So don't know. So many doubts and questions in the mind. But what he saw in 37, the world is seeing it today. Everything. The process of transformation. And many people all over the world 
are now talking about the future of the world. We're talking about the future of the world. Whether it's the future of humanity or we're talking about the future of the planet, we're talking about the future of the world. But the vision that Brahma Baba had was not only about what's happening to this world, but the most important vision he had was that this world is also on the journey of shifting from a caterpillar to a butterfly. It's not one soul shifting from a caterpillar to a butterfly, but also this planet is now going to shift from being a caterpillar to a butterfly. It's a metamorphosis. It's not just a change. It's not a paradigm change. It's a huge shift, a shift which a human mind can't even conceptualize that this is how the world is going to change. So on one side, is a huge population which is talking about all the issues facing the planet and humanity and then we are all here today today to be on the journey of not just shifting the self to being a cat caterpillar from a caterpillar to a butterfly but taking up the responsibility with the understanding that when I change it's also the world which is going to change the world is going to change. If anyone ever asks you, kya lagta hai, dunya ka kya hone wala hai, what do you think is going to happen to the world? Give them the good news. Give them the good news that we are just there already. It's going to be a beautiful world. A world which everybody was waiting for, the new world, the Satyug, the golden age, the paradise. That world is going to be a reality very soon. It's just a concept for many minds. But Brahma Baba saw that vision in 1937. And just that vision which he got, through a vision which he got from God, the Supreme Power himself, that faith that this will become a reality and that I am an instrument to make this a reality took him on a journey. One soul in one city, Hyderabad, Sindh, today in Pakistan. Today, his journey of transformation is the journey of millions of souls in over 130 countries all over the world. Is that anything short of a miracle? Not at all. Not at all. And that's why it reaffirms the power of one. Sometimes we say, what is the use if only I change? The world's not going to change. But we understand, we experiment and we experience when I change, the world changes. The world changes. It will shift from my world to my family, to my workplace, to my city, to my country and to the world. So it's going to go from that seed, the energy is going to go to all over the world. So we've not come here today just to be a little happier than what we are because we are all happy. Everyone's always happy? Oh, You look all very happy. You're not happy? Hanji? I'm, you are happy, I know. Not always? Happiness always? Happy? Yes. But it's not enough to be happy. It's important to be happy always. Sada khush, not khush, sada khush. Happy always. Let's take a minute of silence. And just check your day-to-day -day life the people you live with, the people you work with, your responsibilities, your roles you play, and everything that's happening around you. And let's look for the reason. The reason. What is it that's not allowing me to be who I want to be. Happy always. Look for three reasons in your life. Three reasons.
pinpoint specific. This is three reasons why I'm not happy always. I want to be happy, I am happy, and then what happens where I shift from happiness to three reasons in my life. And when that happens, my mind shifts to a slight disturbance and if not taken care, goes up to a frustration. I want to be happy, it's my nature. Keep the three reasons there and then just look at yourself with those three reasons and see the possibility while facing those three reasons it could be a situation in your life, it could be a person, their behavior. With just those specific three reasons and the reason not changing, it's there, it's very real. Do I have the power to shift my mind to being calm? stable, understanding. In the same situation, I don't like those three reasons, but do I have the power to be who I want to be stable and happy in the face of those three reasons. How many were able to find three reasons? And you don't have to share them, just that you were able to find your three reasons. Three reasons. What happened? Was it that I was not having any reason when I get disturbed or was it too many that I was not able to find my three which to select for this evening? What happened? Yes? Okay, how many were able to find one reason? One reason. Anyone wants to share any one reason in one line? Why I'm not able to be happy? What's the reason in my life? Anybody? Hanji? Hanji? So beautiful, we got two people saying the same answer. The only difference was she said expectations and he said over expectations. <laughs> expectation is allowed? Because when we say over expectations, it means expectations chalta hai. Over expectation nahi karna, kisi se. So over expectation is not allowed. So expectation doesn't allow me to be happy. Anybody else believes the same thing, that expectations doesn't allow me to be happy? Yes. One. Anything else? Any other reason? Hanji? 
my parents are my parents are suffering ill health health okay so someone very close to me a family member is physically unwell and this is a situation which comes once in a while and sometimes it's there for a longer period of time which means it's an illness which is there to stay for some time and sometimes it's also an ailment which doesn't probably have a healing too. Anything else? Hanji? Ego? Overthinking. Beautiful. And what's the reason for overthinking? Which is the situation which makes you think too much? Everything. How sweet. <laughs> Everything makes me think too much. <laughs> ah, overthinking is the disease of this year. Overthinking, thinking too much. But sometimes we don't even know whether I'm thinking too much because that overthinking has become my normal speed of thinking. How would I know this is a normal speed of thinking? This is overthinking or this is over overthinking. How would we know? How do we come to know this is overthinking? What is the symptom? What will we feel? Tired, okay. What else? Overthinking. Anxious. Second, overthinking. Lack of clarity. Confused. Not able to take decision. Kya karo, aisa karo, aisa karo, jaun ki nahi jaun, karun ki nahi karo, bolun ki nahi bolo, betho ki nahi betho. Confusion. Because there are so many thoughts that I'm not able to see which one is the right thought for me. Because my mind is creating a huge spectrum of thoughts for me. And I don't know which one to choose. So lack of clarity, confusion, not able to take a decision. Not able to take a decision. Then going to other people asking them for a decision. Please tell me, what should I do? <laughs> and the other person to whom you go for advice, what should I do? They feel extremely powerful that the world comes to me for taking advice to take a decision. Mm -hmm. And they will take less than 30 seconds to give you a decision. Isme kya hai? Divorce karo. Koi badi baat nahi hai isme. Then nothing. Less than 30 seconds to take a decision. But sometimes when a similar situation or even an identical situation comes into their own life, they're not able to take a decision. But it's easy to take a decision for other people. Why? Beautiful. Because we are not detached to that situation. It is easy to take decisions. And which means, if I want to take decisions, all that I have to do is become detached from, detached from situation and detached from people. Hona hai apko detached? Hona hai apko detached? Do you want to get detached from people? No. See, confusion kitna hai? We know that if I'm detached, I'll have clarity, the power to discern what's right, what's wrong, take a decision, quick decision, 30 seconds, only if I'm detached. But do I want to get detached? No. So which means I prefer to be? I prefer to be attached. And if I'm attached, I continue to live in? Fear. And if there's fear, there are too many thoughts. If there's too many thoughts, then there's no clarity. Then there's no clarity. Then there's no decision. So circle kya ora? Ghumta ja rahe. Ghumta ja rahe. Why don't we want to get detached? Sab kuch to itna acha ho jayega. Why don't we want to get detached? You know what secret? When someone comes to the Brahma Kumaris for the first time, and they want to learn meditation. Family and friends make them sit at home and say, Vaha nahi jana, vaha nahi jana. This is not your age for spirituality and meditation and all. Vaha nahi jana. Fear, fear that if someone goes to study spiritual principles and meditation, they will become detached from their family. And a very, very, very deep, deep, deep rooted belief system, attachment is love. And detachment is? 
Detachment means you will move away from us. And because we did not understand the right meaning of that word, we continued to live the life of a caterpillar. Which means the caterpillar does not want to change because the caterpillar does not even know how beautiful the life is of the butterfly. Does not know. Because it's just a word that we heard somewhere and the word does not sound very nice, detached, sounds very... How does the word sound to you? Unconditional love. How does that sound to you? Unconditional love. This sounds good? Sounds good? Acha. So do you want to... Acha, fairly bad. Do you want unconditional love? Nobody is ready to give it right now. Do you want to give unconditional love? You want to give unconditional love. What if I share with you that detachment equals to unconditional love? No? Attachment equals to conditional love. Attachment equals to expectations. Expectation equals to hurt. Hurt equals to feeling let down. Feeling let down feels betrayed. Betrayed blames the other person. And when I blame the other person, I radiate hurt, resentment, fear. And then I look at them and say, I love you so much, no, that's why I'm feeling all this. <laughs> and they also feel nice and we also feel nice and we're living that kind of a life of a caterpillar which says it's all because I love you so much. So I love you so much, so I'm in so much pain for you and I'm radiating that pain for you. Family is unwell. Family is unwell. Now just visualize a family member, a parent, a spouse, a child, unwell. Body is unwell and maybe mind is also going through a little, little fear, little anxiety. That one family member, unwell, four people living with them. What is the role of these four people when one family member is unwell? What's the role of the family when one member is unwell? What's the role of the family? To take care. And what is the meaning of to take care of somebody when someone's unwell? What's the meaning to take care? Take them to the hospital regularly. One, give them the right diet needed. Two, be around them, sitting there next to them, so the minute they need you, you are available. And while you're sitting there, create fear, <laughs> create worry. When they're not looking, just cry and then do this quietly. No, this is a reality. Don't we do that? Start thinking what life will be if they go away. Start visualizing your life without them. And when I'm sitting there next to my family member who's already going through an ailment and a treatment, I am radiating all this negative vibration to them. And what will this negative vibration do to their mind? It will create pain. And when their mind is in pain, what vibration will they radiate to their body? it slows down healing. Whether we like it or not, the truth is that family and friends become instrumental in slowing down the healing of people. Because we radiate so much pain, worry, anxiety, fear, not one hour, one day, ten days, one year, two years, continuous pain. Now visualize, sitting there, right next to them, very powerful, strong, faith, everything will be perfect. Everything will be perfect. Taking the responsibility that my role is not just to take care of you physically, my role is to strengthen you emotionally because my vibrations radiate to your mind and together our vibrations radiate to your body and for you to get well, I am going to remain very pure, powerful and positive. This is called support and care. Taking care of the body, there are a lot of people who can do it for us. Hire a nurse, she'll take care of the body throughout the day. Take 
just hire a nurse, she'll do it better than us. But she will not be able to radiate that emotional strength to the family which we can do. But is it possible for me to be stable and calm and confident and full of faith and power if someone in my family is not well? Is it possible? Is it possible? Is it possible? For that I will need to be detached. Those who are attached cannot do it. And that detachment at that moment means you are radiating unconditional love, unconditional power and you are instrumental in healing them and that's what they need. But if I say to myself, they are not well, obviously I will be in pain then sometimes we have seen that the one going through the ailment is very positive. Ever experienced that? The one going through the ailment is very positive, but just people around them. And then when we go to the hospital to see them as friends and well-wishers, and we buy beautiful flowers for them and go there and say, don't worry, everything will be okay. And then we come out and we say, Pichara, kya ho gaya, itni umar <laughs> Negative vibrations, better not to go to the hospital to see them. They don't need this. What do they need right now? power, strength, support, which will bring them up to a higher vibration and that higher vibration will heal their body. Collective vibrations of the family members when someone is not well radiates to the body also of that person. So, if I really want to do something for them, I, before taking care of them, I have to take care of, I have to take care of my mind. Last month I was in a hospital to see someone and just while coming out I met a couple and this lady says, my mother is on ventilator. I said, okay. She started crying. I said, what's the doctor saying? She said, doctor saying, nothing. Now not possible. I said, okay, so? She said, I don't want her to go. I said, is the doctor saying any chance? No chance at all. I said, now you have a choice. How long you want your mother to suffer remaining trapped in that body? Because still you are going to sit next to her and say, don't go, don't go, don't go, don't go. I cannot live without you. She is going to live in that body even though you are 100% certain that she cannot get okay. So she said, what to do? I said, go there, sit next to her, hold her hand connect to God and just send a message, whatever is the best should happen for her. She stared at me and she said, are you trying to say that I'm supposed to go there and say that she should go? I said, we didn't say that. We just said, go there, sit there and tell the soul, whatever is good for you should happen. She said, but good for her is that she should go. I said, that you decide. We know everything, we know everything and yet when the need is there, when they really need our love and support, when they really need our strength, it is our attachment which does not even allow them to leave with dignity. Neither we let people live with dignity, neither we let people leave with dignity, only because we hold on to them like that, attached and say, if you go, what will happen to me? Where is unconditional in this? Love means what is good for you should happen. Attachment means what is good for me should happen. Stay here for me. Be there on the bed, whether you can get up, talk, walk, nothing, just be there because I'm very happy seeing you there. This is not love. This is not love. Love means what is good for that soul should happen. And then she did it. She understood, she cried for five minutes and she went there and she sat there. I said, say everything you want to say to her today because the soul is listening to everything even though she can't talk to you. Talk about everything you want to talk. 
apologize, say sorry, say thank you, say everything that's on your mind and after you finish saying everything, tell her her new body is ready. And tell her, assure her that you will take care of yourself. And tell her that she's going to have a very happy life, Aage. She did it. And the next day, the soul left. This is love for somebody. This is love. We are very confused with the definition of love. And sometimes our own attachments and our own belief systems not only cause pain to us, but also cause so much suffering to them. Because our attachment means we hold on to people like this. Because we believe that our feelings, our happiness is dependent on them. Because we thought we were getting love and happiness from them. The one equation which has gone wrong is that we are going to get it from people. And the purpose of life became from whom am I going to get love and happiness? And that's the only one thing with spirituality changed, that we don't want to get anything. Purpose of our life is to, to give. Look at everything in nature, what's the purpose of it? It gives. And when it gives, the first person through which it flows is... Anyone created anger in the last one week? When you created anger with the pure intention of giving it to them, who was the one who got affected the most? You or them? But it was not meant for you, it was meant for them. <laughs> then who got affected the most? You or them? Them. If we had to check the blood pressure and the pulse that time, who was the body which was going to get affected? We or them? Isn't it proof enough that it's the giver which gets affected? And in most cases, the receiver has a choice. And those people who receive it from us quite often, they will smile inside and they will say, Chodo abhi, ye panch minute ye chalega inka, inko rehne do, and they will smile and they will go away. They will not get affected at all. Always and always and always, the receiver has a choice. But the giver has no choice. Some people believe that I act to get angry. Even an actor cannot act to get angry without creating that anger inside. These are all illusions. So when we are giving something to someone in terms of a feeling or an emotion, the first person who receives it is here. Because I have to create it here, then I give it there. So when I create it here, it's I who feels it first. It's my body which feels the impact of it first. And then I give it to them. And once I give it to them, they have a choice whether to take it, whether to not take it, whether to hold on to it, whether to let them go. It's their choice. You may be radiating a lot of love and respect to somebody and you may find them saying to you, I know you don't love me. Ever found somebody like that? You're sending it to them and you say, no, you don't respect me. Often nowadays, parents tell their children, you don't respect me. And the child goes, mommy, papa, trust me, I respect you. No, you don't. How do I, be, how do I prove to you I respect you? No, I know you don't. Because if you did, then you would have done what I asked you to do. But you didn't do so, you don't love me and respect me. Definitions got confused. So the other soul was giving it, but the receiver was not feeling it. And because the receiver was not feeling it, the receiver believed that I was not getting it. And I can live a lifetime saying, no one loves me, no one respects me, even though everyone around me is giving it to me, but because I am not creating it inside, I don't feel it. So if she is radiating love to me, but I am in pain because of my own issues. And then she's radiating love and she's radiating love and she's radiating. I'm surrounded by people who love me. But I am not happy inside. I am creating my own overthinking of negative thoughts. 
then I cannot receive that love because my frequency is not tuned over. And they will try their best to change my mood, to make me happy and I will sit there grumpy like that. So there's only one person who will experience it when they give it. That one person is? That one person is? Just let's change one equation today. I want love, I want happiness, I want peace. This is some line we picked up from somewhere and everyone's just saying it every day. I want, I want, I want. And the more I'm saying I want, and the secret is that the I want, they I also want. <laughs> so you come home in the evening and the husband looks at the wife and says, and the wife says, <laughs> and then both of them look at their children. And the children say, don't ask me for anything. <laughs> And then we say, why am I in this relationship? I am getting nothing. That's the vocabulary we are using. People come to us and say, I don't want to leave my spouse. What's the reason? I'm getting nothing in the relationship. I said, you were not supposed to get anything. <laughs> they said, we were not supposed to get anything. No, you were supposed to give. But the vocabulary is, I'm getting nothing. Then I even experimented with another partner, thinking inse ni get hua, to inse get ho jayega fir. The equation was wrong. The belief system was wrong. And I so went on living my life like this. And the more I was standing like this, the more I was getting depleted inside. Just one day, change the way of thinking. Even if it's not true right now, just say it and say, I want nothing. Bole par? Hmm. I want? Paka? Achche se? Achche se? Soch ke, dek ke, feel kar ke. I want nothing. I only? I only? And? 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 and till? Very good. Don't count. I have three times given it. Three times I called her up first. Four times I was the first one to start talking after an argument. Five times I did what he asked me to do. Six times I was the one who forgave. We are not here for business. This is business vocabulary. Relationship is not business. This is what is making us unhappy. This is the only cause of our unhappiness because we are looking at the world expecting to get. Who is standing like this? Who is standing like this? Which one do you like? This or this? Dina? Just say, I give. I give. I give, I give, and why do I give? Because I am that. I give respect, I give love, I give happiness. And who will give me? Then who will give me? Because then I get tired of giving sometimes. Just yesterday I met a sister on the flight, she said, I've been giving for ten years. And she looked very unhappy to me, actually. <laughs> the word, she said, how much to give more to my family? That is not giving. That is not giving. That is majburi ka jina. I have to live with them. I have to educate. This is not giving. This is a life which says, I have no choice, but I have to live with them. I have to adjust. I have to keep quiet. I have to bend every time. This is not giving. Giving means I am happy. I need nothing from you to be happy. I radiate happiness, love and respect. And it doesn't matter to me who you are, and it doesn't matter to me what you do and how you behave. Why? Because I'm not giving you for who you are. I'm giving because... I'm giving because this glass of water, it gives nourishment to all, doesn't bother who we are. 
Why? Because it's the nature of water to give. The property of the sun, to give. The nature of the tree, to give. Everything is to give and they don't stop to check what they're getting in return. And they actually don't even give. They are just who they are. And that's what meditation teaches us. I am a happy soul. I don't have to give happiness, just I am a happy soul. I am a peaceful soul. I am a powerful soul. I am a loveful soul. Now when I just live my life with this consciousness, I am a loveful soul, then I'm radiating love. I don't have to give, it just radiates because it's there in our energy field. People can take whatever they want from there. We are not going up to them to give them love and respect, we are just who we are. But the minute someone does something which is not my way, And at that moment, if I get hurt and if I get disturbed, then whether it's for one minute, five minutes, five hours, when I am hurt, I am a radiator of pain. And at one time, I can radiate only one energy. Either I can radiate love, which is a very pure feeling, or I can radiate hurt, which is a negative emotion. And because I get hurt, I cannot radiate unconditional love. Unconditional love means this never changes. It's not based on who you are, what you do, how you behaved, whether you do what I ask you to do, whether you don't do what I ask you to do. It doesn't based on that. Stable, calm, happy, loveful, always. A giver, always. Not dependent on the behavior of other people. Do we get affected by people's behavior? Do we get affected by people's behavior? Do they hurt us? What do they do to hurt us? What does somebody have to do to hurt us? What does somebody have to do to hurt us? Anji? In the way they speak, how do I need to speak right now to hurt you? Yeah, we need to know what hurts me. No, I need to know what hurts me. So brother said, the way people speak hurts me. What about the way people speak hurts me? The words they use, the tone they have. Body language. Achha, body language. Bhi. Ah. How should their tone be? Soft, achha. Kitni soft? Kitni soft chahiye? Because if you ask them now, they'll say, of course I'm soft. Itna soft nahi, aur thoda soft. And agar koi zada soft ho gaya, bolye, itna soft nahi, thoda zada. To kitna soft hona chahiye? Meri setting ke hisaap se. So I want the tone to be soft and I want the words to be sweet. They are not able to speak sweet words right now. Why are they not being able to speak sweet words right now? Because they are? Because they are angry. Which means they are in? Very good. So who's the one who's hurt? Who's the one who's hurt? Who is in pain? It's only people who are in pain will not be able to speak sweetly and softly and politely. This is an emotional illness. So if they are in pain, they are going to speak that way. But they are only talking that way, they can't hurt us. Because they can't get into our mind and create that pain, they can just stand there and talk that way. Someone can even abuse us, someone can shout at us. Someone can talk about us, not talk to us. That's even more interesting. At least when they talk to us, we know what they have to say to us. But when they plan not to talk to us, but they go about the world talking about us, you're going to get lots to hear. Because they don't have the courage to talk to us. It requires courage to go up to a person and talk to them. It's very easy to go and talk about the world to other people. All this requires strength. 
the soul doesn't have strength. So they're not able to talk to us. When they talk to us, they're not able to be polite to us. All this is reflecting whose personality? It's reflecting whose personality? Their. Who is not well? They. Why are we getting hurt? People are not in pain because of their expectations. People are in pain because they do not know how to take care of themselves. Don't make yourself responsible for their pain and don't make them responsible for your pain. Who is creating the pain? If she gets up right now and says some four lines to me in a very aggressive, abusive, insulting manner right here, in front of thousand people. Do I have a choice how to respond? Please give me the choices. One, ignore her. Good. One, two, just smile. <laughs> Very good. Just smile. She is insulting me in front of thousand people. And you are on her side today. And I'm supposed to smile in front of thousand people. Acha, I can do it. Okay. So one is ignore and one is smile and anything else? Walk away. I never thought of that one. Walk away. Anything for? Give her a piece of your mind. Oh. Four. Five. Thank you. Thank you for? Thank you for being so nice to me. <laughs> Five, six, six, Hanji? Six, bless her. Hanji? <laughs> give her the flowers, na? Yeah, I thought as much. So, seventh option is give her flowers. Anything else? Do you see how many options we're already coming up with? But if that had to really happen, I would have got hurt. And when I would have got hurt, I would have said, she behaved that way. Obviously, I will get hurt. That word obvious said, there's no other option to respond. And I finished all my options. And I told my mind, every time somebody is not nice to you, obviously you have to get hurt. And it's my mind, it's obedient, it does it always. It does it always, because I told my mind, obviously you will get hurt. What is so obvious about it? It's only because I did not explore all these options. And one more option, I should have understood that for her to behave this way, to not have control over herself in front of thousand people and say like this, she's in so much pain, compassion. Compassion, empathy is not a word which is to be read in books. Compassion means understand the other person is in pain. Whether people are going through aggression, resentment, fear, jealousy, insecurity, domination, manip, anything, they are in pain. If you remember this, they are in pain. You will never say, they hurt me. You will say, they are hurt. And when I remember they are hurt, I next thought I will have is, what can I do for them? And the easiest way to heal them is, just take one minute, connect to God, send them two powerful pure vibrations. Support. Support. I was with a group of nurses like this one day and I said, what's the cause of stress in your life? And I thought they would say night duty and all those kind of things. And they said, doctor, gussa karte. <laughs> I said, that is the cause of stress. Doctor, because doctors probably get very angry with them. And I said, but you're used to patients being very erratic and all kinds of languages. They are nurses. They have a lot of compassion. So they said, no, that is okay because the patient is not well. I said, they are also not well. <laughs> and one sister looked at me and she said, what do you mean they are not well? I said, they are not well. Anyone who is angry is not well. 
because they have that sanskar of compassion, they were immediately able to shift it from the patient to the doctor. And then one of them called me next day, she said, Are, it's very easy. Hai. I said, what easy? Hai? She said, today he was shouting again in the OT. And I just looked at him and I said, not well. <laughs> this is understanding. This is understanding. Not well. Now what's my role? My role is to give love, give support, give compassion. But I cannot do any of this when I say, they hurt me. It's finished, full stop. Now nothing to do with them, now I am in pain. Who's going to take care of them? Now I am in pain. And then I look at them to say, come and heal me. Come and apologize to me, you change so that I'll be... One vicious cycle of being in pain. But when they are behaving that way to me, and I have to say they are in pain, I have to be emotionally detached. And detachment only means my emotion is not attached to your behavior. Detachment does not mean moving away with pe from people. Detachment means being there always, but my mind, my feelings, my behavior is not attached to your behavior. Which means you can be in pain, I can be stable. You can be angry, I can be calm. You can insult me, I can bless you. And that is unconditional love. And that is unconditional respect. Unless we practice and develop this power of detachment, we can never radiate unconditional. It is conditional. Only till you are my way. Only till I'm happy with the way you are. Only till you're listening to everything I'm asking you to do. And that makes us actually weak instead of strong. Attachment means I am emotionally dependent on how many people you want to be dependent on? We are addicted to their behaviors. When we are emotionally dependent on people, we are dependent on them being a certain way to us. Your little boy, every day used to come, Mama, 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 Mama gets dependent on that behavior. And then one day when the boy was this, boy stopped saying, Mama, Mama, goal, 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 goal. Mama is hurt. And then the boy found somebody else to go. Mama is even more hurt. <laughs> and then the mama says, Jab se iski shadi hui, ye to mera raha hai nahi. <laughs> And then the parent is radiating hurt to their most beautiful relationship. Unaware, unaware, we radiate pain to our most important relationships because there is attachment. Because I was used to them being a certain way and my happiness dependent on them being my way. People will change. People's behavior can change and if I'm addicted to them being that way, I will fluctuate, I will disturb, and I will stand in front of them and I say, please be the way you used to be. We literally beg them, please be the way you used to be. And they will just say, okay. It's really like the people on the road asking and some people just walk off without giving. People do that to us when we stand there in front of them and say, how you were last year, why have you changed? Please, 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 why don't you call me as you used to? There can be no more dependency than this. All the other addictions we talk about are very, very simple compared to this addiction. Because I was attached. You want to be detached? Do you want to be detached? Yes? Which means you can continue to radiate love and blessings to your children even when they are not your way. Even when they are not your way, you will advise them, you will suggest, you will discipline, but they might not always listen to what we want them to be. And when we don't get hurt, we send power. And when we send power, we are able to empower them. We are able to empower them. But when we get hurt and when we get upset, then we are the ones who deplete our own 
you will never create negative energy for your neighbor. No. So you actually send more love to them. <laughs> yeah, because you're always radiating, you're normal, positive about them, let them do what you want, you're not fluctuating. We are sending negative <coughs> energy to people close to us. We're sending negative energy to people close to us only because of one reason, attachment. Attachment. And that's why the five vices are calm, growth, lobe, mo. End me aata hai. End me aata hai. Lust, anger, greed, attachment, ego. But when we start empowering ourselves spiritually, which means I the being, the soul, when I connect to God and energize myself with God's spiritual knowledge, power, love, blessings, I start getting stronger. And stronger means I will not get affected by people's behaviors. And when I don't get affected and I remain stable, I am shifting towards being detached. We are living in times that we get affected even if somebody does not like our post on social media. <laughs> First thing in the morning, see how many likes on what I posted last night. <laughs> and then you say, okay, who all are the ones who liked? One, two, three, four. Why did she not like my photo? <laughs> I always click like on her photo. Many of us are just clicking like, 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 like without even seeing the post. It's become one platform where we are just trying to satisfy people's egos and instead of having beautiful relationships, we are getting weak and we are making them weaker. We just get up and say like, like, sabko like kar do, khush ho jai. Somebody writes a message, my mother passed away, people go and like it. Yeah, because they're just clicking like, like, Aadhi Raat ko neend mein to like, like, like kar rahe hain. So they don't even read ke kis cheez ko like kar rahe ho. See how, what we're doing with each other. What are we doing? And we are just clicking the like to please them. They are getting happy, people clicked my like and oh, I have so many likes. Self-esteem is going to become so fragile that it will crash for nothing. It needs nothing now to crash. This is not the way we are supposed to be. Then we can never be happy. Forget always, we'll never be happy if we live life like that. So my happiness depends on me. I share a post, people can like if they want, people don't want to like, don't like. I have shared it for give, not post and say. In every karma we have to check, am I giving? Or am I? We've reached a stage where even when we do charity or social work, we are actually looking for something in return. My name, my photo, my seat, my designation, then even dan will not remain dan. Seva will not remain seva because seva means giving. We were taught since childhood, ek hath de, dusre hath ko pata nahi chalna chahiye. Which means if one hand is giving, the other hand should also not come to know. Today we want... <laughs> Why is it saying one hand gives, the other hand should not come to know? Means give without wanting anything in return. Because if you want even a slightest appreciation, a slightest acknowledgement, anything in return, you are not a giver, you are a... So, wo seva nahi banti fir. Wo seva nahi banti. And happiness is only in giving. And the reason why we are not happy nowadays often, because we are rarely giving. We are rarely giving. We are going to work for wanting. We are in relationships for getting. We are even doing charity for getting. What are we doing? Niswarth, selfless giving. Kya kar rahe hum? Kya kar rahe hum? Kuch bhi nahi. 
तो जब करेंगे नहीं तो इट विल नॉट फ्लो फ्रॉम मी आई एम स्टैंडिंग लाइक दिस एंड आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू गेट इट इफ आई एम स्टैंडिंग लाइक दिस आई एम गोइंग टू गेट इट वेन इट क्रिएटेड हेयर गिव इट एंड एक्सपेक्ट नथिंग इन रिटर्न अ पेरेंट लुक्स आफ्टर द चाइल्ड फॉर ट्वेंटी फाइव ईयर्स वॉट्स द इंटेंशन गिविंग गिविंग बट आफ्टर ट्वेंटी फाइव ईयर्स अगर गलती से भी एक बार कह दिया मैंने तुम्हारे लिए क्या क्या किया एंड दे आर गोइंग टू लुक बैक एंड से क्या किया क्या किया सब करते हैं फिनिश्ड वॉश्ड ट्वेंटी फाइव ईयर्स फिनिश्ड फिनिश्ड द प्योरेस्ट रिलेशनशिप सेल्फलेस ऑल्सो हैज सम सटल Why? Why do we want from everybody? Because I, the soul, am not taking care of myself. I am weak, and so I want from the world. But when I start energizing myself daily, when I take from the one who really can give, fill myself, then I don't need from the world. then i don't need from the world and when i don't need from the world i have no expectations i am going to give because i've got my stock from there but if i the more i don't take care of myself the more i will have expectations so a simple way of checking am i on my right journey on the spiritual path simple way of checking my expectations should start reducing and my acceptance level should start increasing kalyug is called a yug of never ending desires and satyug is called ichha matram avidya no knowledge of desire and that means shifting from depleted soul to a 100% powerful soul who does not want anything who only gives aur dene wale ko devta kehte hain devi devtaon ki murti mein haath kaise hota hai देवी देवताओं की मूर्ति में हाथ कैसे होता है एक हाथ ऐसे होता है और दूसरा हाथ कैसे होता है ऐसे होता है दोनों हाथों से देना है दोनों हाथों से बांट रहे हैं विच मीन्स ओनली गिव गिव डज नॉट मीन फिजिकल थिंग्स गिव मीन्स गिव लव गिव ब्लेसिंग्स गिव गुड विशेज एनी वन विल गो इन द टेम्पल एनी वन विल स्टैंड इन फ्रंट ऑफ द मूर्ति देवी देवता इज गिव इक नी आर दोज डिवाइन सोल्स the satyogi souls all that we have to do to be happy is shift from shift from not taking asking asking snatching de do de do kisi bhi tarah mujhe de do no giving giving no expectations acceptance i don't want anything i am happiness and love i only give but i need to fill myself first i need to fill myself first and to fill myself that is the way meditation the soul is depleted it wants the soul power starts increasing it doesn't want anything it will only give and we will reach from a stage to a, from an emotionally depleted soul to a fully charged 100% battery charged satyug devi devta dene wale that is butterfly that is the butterfly we have the potential to reach that and each soul has the potential to reach that and when we reach that satyugi stage the world is going to become satyug the world is going to become satyug so do we want to shift from asking to giving देना देना सबको देना हमेशा देना एंड दैट इज वाई हर घर में दिया जलाते हैं दिया जलाते हैं ना वी लाइट द लैम्प एंड इट इज सेट इफ द लैम्प इज लिट इट इज ऑस्पिशियस एंड इफ द लैम्प ब्लोज ऑफ इट इज इन ऑस्पिशियस दिया बुझ गया जीवन अशुभ है दिया जल रहा है जीवन शुभ है कौन सा दिया कौन सा दिया जल रहा है तो जीवन शुभ है दिया 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 प्यार दिया रिस्पेक्ट दिया दुआएं दिया शुभकामना दिया जब तक दिया साइड पर रहेंगे जीवन शुभ है दिया बुझ गया जीवन अशुभ है तो अपना अपना दिया जलाना है 
और हर घर में एक ही दिया चाहिए सिर्फ Every house needs only one soul who's saying, "I'm going to give," and that's why we see even at the Brahma Kumaris, everyone asks, "How did you come into Gyan?" This evening, somebody will ask, "How did you come?" They ask Jyantiban, "How did you come?" And all of us had only one answer: "My mother got me here." And Jyantiban said, "My mother got me here," and I said, "My mother got me here," because every family needs only one dia, and that when that one dia gives, na, then the others also shift from that liya liya to. They are one power of one. Don't wait for the rest of the family. Don't wait for the rest of the world. Just say, "I am ready to shift. I am ready to give." But I will first fill myself, fill myself, and then give. People around us are going through emotional issues people around us are going through mental health issues people around us are going through physical issues people around us are going through financial issues don't expect from them if you expect from them you're writing a destiny of pain for yourself and adding pain to them and adding pain to them they are in pain and we look at them and say give me love वो मुस्कुरा नहीं पा रहे हम उनको बोल रहे हैं मेरे से प्यार से बात करो ताकत दिस इज नॉट बीइंग फेयर टू पीपल नो इट्स नॉट बीइंग फेयर सो दिया सो फॉर दैट व्हाट डू वी डू सम टाइम डेली फॉर आवर सेल्फ दैट इज ऑल दैट वी नीड पर्पस ऑफ आवर लाइफ टू हील द सेल्फ एंड टू शिफ्ट फ्रॉम टू शिफ्ट फ्रॉम एन इमोशनली डिपेंडेंट सोल टू शिफ्ट टू एन इमोशनली independent soul to shift from a person who gets affected if somebody doesn't like my post to a person who will remain stable let the world do what they want to me that's the power to shift to shift from a person who can cry if somebody raises their voice to a person who will remain stable even if a family member leaves the body radiates love and peace to the soul on the journey that's the power just shift just shift and that's the potential we all have and what do we need for that at the brahma kumaris we have four very beautiful subjects gyan yog dharana seva gyan spiritual study increases soul power early morning instead of reading and studying what's happening in the world reading about ourself about god content full of compassion love empathy unity spiritual study first subject will increase soul power second subject yog meditation connecting to the supreme power energizing the soul filling the self will increase soul power third dharana once i've studied it I've meditated now I have to take care during the day that it's in my practical life dharana dharam and when the quality is in my practical life I will radiate blessings to all I will receive good energy in return soul power will increase and fourth subject seva seva means now whatever is a part of my personality it automatically goes from me to others and while giving to others who's the first person who gets it me seva kaise karenge hum seva different ways to do seva one dhan se seva we contribute using our power of money seva we give money somebody else's journey starts blessings come to us soul power increases second karam se seva which means you do physical work and you're a part of a place which is doing something which is going to give happiness to people karam se seva third vani se seva you share what you've understood you share your experiences you share your knowledge with the world they shift to being a happier person soul power increases and fourth man se seva just radiate pure vibrations to everybody heal them your soul power will increase so four subjects to increase soul power spiritual study meditation implementation of what we are studying and giving seva if we integrate these four subjects into our life 
soul power is going to go on increasing. And we are going to shift, shift from being attached to being emotionally independent, emotionally detached and which means unconditional love. It's not just a word, we are not attached to the ringtone, detached, stable. It's just one thought, good music, finished. <laughs> and we've shifted, finished. Otherwise for the next ten years we can get disturbed when a phone rings in a program. <laughs> Awareness, attention, check, change. Super. So four subjects. And what we do at the Brahma Kumaris is, when we come to the center, then sisters teach us these four subjects. They teach us these four subjects, they teach us the art of meditation, they teach us how to create a personal relationship with God. A concept. Just understood, ha, God hai, Bhagwan hai. Lekin agar Bhagwan hai aur wo mere jeevan ka hissa hai, to mera jeevan aise nahi ho sakta hai. It can't be. It can't be. But if God is there but not a part of my life, then that's why I'm not experiencing God's power and love. Usko humne kaha ke tum maat pita. Tum maat pita ho humare. Or hum kya hai? Shanti bhi nahi hai humare pas, khushi bhi nahi hai humare pas, pyaar bhi nahi hai. Dekin Bhagwan mera maat pita hai. Doesn't work, no? Doesn't work. God is my parent and I am Kangal. It's not possible. But it's possible because I'm saying God is my parent but I'm not experiencing God is my parent. And I'm not experiencing that God's love and power in my life. So meditation gives us that personal experience of that relationship with God. And we don't only experience peace, love and happiness. The most important experience is feeling of security. In a world of uncertainty, you're always safe and secure ke kuch bhi ho jai, I am going to be stable. Personal guarantee of the self, of the self. So just promise yourself an hour, an hour. You all have taken out this time to be here this evening. Traveled through the traffic. Did not watch the Indian-New Zealand match. And because you decided to be here, the match is no more happening there. <laughs> but it is a decision. I was thinking this morning, I said, who's going to leave the match today and come for the program? <laughs> the semi-final there. But see, this is, this is who we are. Because we are ready to work on ourselves. But then the program doesn't end today. The program starts today. It's a journey. Today we are only here to take a decision that I'm ready to work on myself. In London, we have Raj Yoga meditation centers. There is one here in the south of London. And I think on your chair you have a leaflet on which the address of the centers is given. And also the details of the programs at the center. Everyone has this on their chair? Just keep this with you. It has all the center addresses, website, phone number and the details of the program. Next Saturday, next Saturday is the first meditation course in this area, Croydon. And on 20th and 21st. So this coming weekend and the next weekend. All the details are given on that leaflet. Promising yourself one hour? Yes? Who is promising themselves one hour to learn meditation? Anyone very busy and that's why not raising their hands? Aadha aadha ni haath uthana aur auron ka haath dekhna ne. I am ready to be the diya of my house. I am ready to give and to give and to give. So take the leaflet, the details are there with you. Promise yourself, I am ready to be the one. This is for me and this is for my family. This is also for my family. It's not just for me. Sit back. Let's do it now. Very close to London, about an hour away from here, near Oxford, it's a very, very beautiful retreat center. 
I was there at that retreat center last time when I came here. It's a place where it's not just beautiful in terms of its structure and in terms of the surroundings and the nature and the prakriti, but it vibrates at the highest frequency of purity and selfless love and selfless service. For over 25 years, millions of people have had retreats there because every weekend there's a meditation retreat there. This year, I was not able to go there even though I wanted to go there because that retreat center is going through its process of renovation. And most of you have been a part of allowing that retreat center to come back to its original beauty by contributing to that renovation process. And really thank you so much for being a part of that. Because when you contribute to something which is now going to connect many, 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 many souls to God and to them own selves, you're making an investment. That is the seva subject. You're making that investment where you have written in your destiny blessings for because each time when someone comes there and experiences that innate peace, they bless everyone who was responsible for giving them that peace. And we're not even aware, we give and we forget. But the return is going to come multi, 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 multi fold. So thank you so much to each one for being a part of it. For anyone who still wants to be a part of it, then while you're on your way out, you can connect with the sisters and you can contribute to be a part of that retreat center renovation. And also the website address is given on the leaflet. So in case you're not able to do it now, you can always do it online. And by next June, that retreat center will be ready. And then we will organize our retreat there. Every, or every program of the Brahma Kumaris is, is offered as a service to community. So even when people come there for a weekend retreats, it is free for them. It's seva. It's a very beautiful model, the way this place works. Nothing is charged, nothing is asked for, but yet everything runs so beautifully. Because it's not running on a business model, it's running on the model of Seva. So Seva doesn't stop the money from coming, but Seva gets everybody's feeling of belongingness and the intention to share and give. So that's what makes the place vibrate at a very beautiful frequency. So next year we'll organize a retreat at Oxford for everyone who's come for the program today. Yeah? Ready to come for the retreat? Yes. We will do that. With family and friends. A spiritual weekend. But before that, we will do the meditation course next week. By next year, you will be the host of the program and the host of the retreat. <laughs> Come, let's sit back straight. Three deep breaths, inhale and exhale and let the body relax. But alert. I, the being, the energy, the creator of every feeling. I am a happy being. Happiness is my nature. Love is my nature. It's who I am. I am a loveful being. My every thought, my every feeling, my every word, my every behavior, vibrates at the frequency of love and happiness. I radiate love and happiness to the world.
I give and give and give. Giving is my sanskar. It's who I am. God loves me unconditionally. God loves me unconditionally. And gives me the power to radiate unconditional love. I receive from him, I give to all. Always and to everyone. emotionally independent independent freedom is my nature I'm free to be love People may be my way, people may not be my way. I am emotionally independent. I am stable. I understand them. Compassion comes natural to me. I radiate unconditional love. Seva to give is my way of living always I commit one hour to myself for my study and my meditation practice, it's my priority to take care of myself and my family and friends and the world. It's my responsibility. The next 20 minutes as we drive home I, the powerful being, will be in silence. Silence, so I carry this vibration home. Silence to be with myself and to create that shift before I reach home. And as I walk out, I will get a blessing card and prasad. Prasad.
prasad cooked by the sisters in the remembrance of god energized with god's love and blessings prasad and in the coming weekends i will begin my retreat of meditation we will remain seated for 5 minutes and only when requested we will start walking out in silence angels radiating love and power to the world even as we walk we radiate power to the world the first three rows on these two columns will take this door and the last three rows will take the door at the back in silence light and powerful taking the blessing card and the prasad there's literature outside we can get details of the oxford retreat center but everything will happen in silence first three rows this side this door next three rows at the back next three rows in the front next three rows at the front next three rows at the back next three rows at the back next three rows at the front the first three rows get take this door first three rows this side in silence in silence next three rows that door that door second door next three rows this side
first three rows this side last three rows door at the back Three rows here. Next three rows in the front, last three rows at the back. 